Hey, gun people. I've been talking about doing a uh, a video on my crazy cop stories, and I've been making up uh, a list of some crazy cop stories. So this will be my first crazy cop story video. And now some of these videos, people are going to get pissed off because they're going to be like, "Why didn't you do this? And why didn't you do that? And you're crooked, and you should have, and you're no." Well, look. I'm going to be honest in these videos and tell you real stories that happened to me that I witnessed that I was there. So it is what it is. If you don't like it, you don't agree with it. Sorry, it happened. Just because you don't like it doesn't change the facts. So when you can question whether or not I did the right thing or I should have done more or I didn't do enough or I was a bad cop or whatever. But uh, I, I'll start with my, my first experience of uh, seeing something that I was really disturbed about as a cop. And I was in a predicament on whether or not to turn the cop in. Now, everybody wants to talk about cops to the blue line. You don't turn. Most cops aren't going to turn cops in for semi-minor stuff, okay? I think most cops will turn somebody in if they see them planning evidence, trying to convict somebody who's not guilty, or um, lying about something in a serious crime. I mean, if somebody, you know, cops will get up there and I don't remember exactly, so they'll kind of ad lib it and say, well, it was this. And another cop may be, man, I don't remember it that way, but they're not going to jump up on a stand and say, that cop was wrong, I want to testify, because you'll, you'll be out of a job, you'll be ousted. Look, the government doesn't like whistleblowers, so everybody wants to say cops should take a stand. And, uh, look, anybody that's a whistleblower gets screwed. So the, the government doesn't like that. So it's very hard for cops to turn another cop, so unless it's very serious, most cops aren't going to do it, because they know their career is going to be over. Just like I've got a video where I did a whistleblower on a DA that was trying to hide evidence during a murder trial for a death penalty case. And I went, oh, hell no. That ain't going to happen. So I drew the absolute line there. That was an easy choice for me. I turned him in. I whistle blew. And, you know, they came after I tried to fire me. I had to get my job. I had to fight. You know, it was a pain in the butt. And nothing happened to him. And that's why most cops don't do anything because they know if you turn in somebody in the system, you're just going to get squashed like a bug and it's not going to matter. But I think most cops, when it comes to big major things, they will. So this was kind of a major thing to me, and it really kind of gave me problems on whether or not I should turn this in. And I end up not turning it in for the reasons I'm going to tell you. So we're working in this city, <laughs> and uh, somebody ran through, almost ran over somebody, was driving crazy, drinking, shooting out the car, something. I mean, it, was, it, was, it wasn't shooting out the car because we had towed the car, and we ended up not towing the car. So... Whatever it was, we were going to contact the guy and probably give him a ticket. But when we went to pull him over, me and my partner hit the lights, he took off and he ran. So we couldn't catch his ass. So he, he got, like all crooks do, they get to the area where they know, where they know they can run, where they know they can get away. He runs in here, parks his car at an apartment complex. So by the time we pull in and get out, he's got a pretty good head start running. So I go after the runner, and my partner goes and clears the car. So, of course, the guy loses me because, you know, crooks are always young and in shape, and cops are usually just getting lazier, fatter, and older. But cops, most criminals are pretty much young because as they get older, they're either in prison or they figured out, I'm too old to do this shit. So most criminals are on the younger side. So I lose this guy. So I come running back, and, you know, I, my uniform is kind of trash. I went through some bushes, and, you know, I'm coming back all dirty and tired, and I see my partner under the hood of this car. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell is he doing under the hood of that car? So I walk up to him, and he's got his pocket knife out, and he's cutting the distributor cap and the wires. And I'm like, what, dude, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, yo, man, this is the streets. He goes, these crooks need to know you run from the cops, so there's going to be consequences. I go, dude, don't be doing that shit in front of me and making me a witness. Now, when this guy calls and complains, and they ask me if I know anything, I've either got to lie or fucking sell you out. I said, don't do that shit in front of me. And he goes, all right, cool, I won't do it in front of you. But he goes, he ain't going to make a complaint because he's got a warrant. That's why he ran. He's up to no good. He either dumped his dope or gun. So if he does fall and make a complaint, we're going to arrest his ass for evading. And he knows he's going to jail. So he's not going to call and complain. And he's right. He didn't call and complain. But I was kind of, you know, I, 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 I don't know. To me, I was like, and the reason why I didn't turn this in is, one, I was new to the agency. Two, this guy was really a good cop. And they're gonna, people are going to be like, oh, how could you say he's a good cop? Because he was a good cop. He, and he got, he got away with a lot of stuff because he was half black and half white. So he, anytime they tried to mess with him, he'd go like, hey, man, you're just picking on me because I'm black. So he pretty much got away with whatever he wanted. 
So he was a little on the rebel side, which I'm kind of on the rebel side. I, I, I kind of like the rebel side. And to, not to mention that, he was my neighbor. He lived across the street from me. We were buddies. Me, him, and his wife would hang out. So it's like, do I want to turn this guy in, cost him his job, cost me my career, and probably what's going to happen is maybe they'll make an example out of him, maybe they'll fire him, but the, the guy that ran the dirt bag that caused this whole incident of the warrant is still going to be out there, and he'll be like, happy good, a cop lost his job because I ran from the cops because I had a warrant or a gun or a dope, whatever it was he was running from. So that, that was... That was one of my memorable ca <laughs> crazy cop stories that I'm just like, damn, what a predicament. How do I figure this out? And, you know, and I guess I just waited out and justified it for whatever reason, but I just went, you know what? I'm looking at a guy that's a, a decent cop who I know personally. I know his wife. I know him. And this piece of shit dirt bag that just almost hit somebody or was driving reckless, and now he ran from us and took off. Now... I waited out and I didn't turn him in. So if I'm a bad cop and I'm worthless, and the, the problem is, is people don't realize, as soon as cops turn people in for things like this, which I consider this, it's not what I say minor, it's a little bit more on a higher scale of minor because it really troubled me, but it's not like somebody's going to jail, dying, getting false evidence, he's not going to prison. It's not something that's gonna impact this guy long term. It's gonna piss him off, it's gonna cost him a little bit of money, but if we'd have caught him and put him in jail, the government would have took some money. The government would have fined him. The government would have inconvenienced him. So, you know, and some cops will call this street justice or, or, or you know, just handling it outside the courts or whatever. And, and some crooks would rather it that way. I mean, there's a lot of crooks that would just rather you beat their ass and let them go than put them in a system where they got to sit in jail and, you know, go through the system with the fines and all the other crap. They'd just rather take an ass whooping on the street and you let them go. But, you know, cops can't do that. And sometimes, you know, whatever. Maybe I'll get to some of those stories in the crazy cop stories later. But <laughs> So that's that's one of my crazy cop stories. I'd like to, since that was a bad one, I'd like to, oh, let me, here, let me do this one. This was a pretty good one. So we're, rock, we're, rock, we're going after this parolee. And I pull over some guy for, I, I can't remember, something. I figured he's gangbanger. He had tats. He was in a piece of shit car. I was like, all right, let me check this guy out. Maybe he's got a warrant. So I pull him over. And I think he ended up having a warrant, but it was a poop up misdemeanor warrant that I was like, I'm not going to book this guy for jail. I want to get a gun. I go, dude, either you go to jail on your warrant or you give me somebody who's got something worse than you. Oh, man, don't make me do this. I can't be a snitch. No, I go, your choice, dude. You got a warrant. I've either got to take you to jail or I let you go because you give me something. All right, man, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> There's a dude you're looking for, and he gave me the guy's name. He was a prolie at large. He was supposed to be back in prison. And he goes, he's in this apartment over here. And he gave me the apartment. I go, all right, dude. I said, I got your driver's license. I got your plate. I got your car. If I go over there and that guy ain't there, I'm going to hunt you down like a dog with a new bone. And I'm going to have your ass in jail. And I said, it's gonna be, you're going to make the worry. He goes, no, man, it's serious. It's good. It's good. I go, all right. So I let the guy go. Now, a lot of cops don't let him go until they confirm their other information. But I was like, I don't want to book this guy anyway. It's a BS warrant. So I let him go. So I call in for a few extra units, and we surround the house, and we're getting around the house, and we got units here because this guy's a runner. We know he's a runner. He's going to go back to prison. He knows he's going back to prison. He's got nothing to lose for running. So as we're surrounding the house, <laughs> one of the guys gets on the radio and goes, I got him. He's coming out the door. He's naked. He just came out the back window, blah, blah. So everybody rushes. We go grab this dude, hook this guy up, naked, <laughs> running out the window, we're like, and I'm, I show up and I'm like, that's not our guy. I go, dude, what's your name? Gave him the name. I go, why, why are you running? He goes, oh man, I'm a parolee and I knew you guys, I have a warrant and I knew you guys were going to coming for me. So when I saw the cops sneaking around outside, I figured I'd make a run for it. It was the wrong dude. <laughs> so we got a two for one or we got this dumbass naked <laughs> who ran out the wrong apartment that we were surrounded because we were surrounded the whole area. So he took off because he saw the cops out there. We went back to the house, surrounded the house and went to, got the parolee. He was in there. So we got two parolees because one dummy said jump out the window. So <laughs> those are my two crazy cop stories. Um, I'll do more as we go along. I've got a little list of ones that I'm going to go over and... Uh, Hopefully you got a chuckle, and hopefully you're not thinking that I'm a bad guy for not turning in my neighbor. <laughs> All right, we'll end up there.